welcome back, back to Eggleston Hall Gardens. We haven't been around for about 18 months, haven't done bugger all. I've had some problems with blood pressure and split retinas or eyeball problems. My mother always said it would make me go blind. As you can see, nothing's changed. The new dog's grown up a bit, a little bit bigger. The old girl's still there. Mm, Tucker's away somewhere sleeping. He'll be around in a minute. We've had a, a few problems over the year. I got a bit sick of doing these videos because uh, well, I got some weird comments on YouTube and things. So I thought, ah, oh, fuck it, I ain't gonna do it anymore then. I've got better things to do with me life. But I've had so many nice comments from people as well, so I thought, yeah, why not? They're not that hard to do. But uh, we can't edit them. We can't make them any more PC or cleaner or less smutty. They are what they are. And if the, what they call them, if the trolls don't like them, well, they can kiss me ass, frankly. You see that tree there? Can the cameraman point up there? You see that great big copper beech? That tree is 400 years old, just over. It's absolutely bloody marvellous, isn't it? Yet for four centuries, that tree's looked over this garden and has looked over all the, what shall we say, the different gardeners that have been here for four centuries. What worries me is if it ever falls over, it's going to come straight through the potting shed. Well, I suppose that's no reason to have it down. Anyway, it's protected, thank God. But it is the most beautiful thing. I've noticed in recent years, it's starting to, it's lighter foliated. It's got less leaf on. In this dry weather, it's really suffering a bit. Anyway, that's old. I'm getting old. But we're still going to do a bit more. So I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to season two. We were going to do some stuff about delphiniums. Now, Um, we were going to do some stuff about delphiniums. We did it uh, a few years back at Plantsman's Corner, and it is, it's been very popular, but the sound quality is not very good, and I didn't really go into it in much depth. So come with me and let me explain um, about them. Just, just hang on there. Now, delphiniums, delphiniums. If you have them in the border, they'll probably be finishing flowering now. That's some delphiniums flowering. Now, when they go to seed, or if you cut them back, like this, you have to pretend this was in the garden. They, it produce, they produce these shoots. And very often, you can get a second flowering. A late summer flowering of delphiniums by removing the, removing them. That's because at the base of the plant are dormant buds. As the summer progresses and they have the second flowering, new buds are formed at the bottom of the second lot of shoots. These buds will be next year's growth. Now, as a propagator, if we stop the plant and dig it out before it sets this second lot of growth, we can take out those buds and actually use them for propagation. So if you were in the outside, we would cut our, our delphiniums back 
back hard. We'll do this when they, as soon as they finish flowering. Now some delphiniums flower earlier than others. You get early season, mid season, late season. But each of them, you cut them back. You give them about a week to 10 days. That, that period of time allows the buds to swell without actually, um, without actually forming too much. They're forming into a shoot. That's the time after the week or 10 days from cutting back that we dig them up. Let me show you how that's done. Now, if you were taking them out of the border, you would dig them up and you'd bring the root ball into the potting shed or wherever you do your potting. This one here is something that was cut back about 10 days ago. This is a, a nice variety, which I'm gonna take out. That's all this year's root. Now remember, this is midsummer. well, very late midsummer. We're we're at the end of July here now. Now we're going to trim that up. Most of you, if you've seen my videos before, know I'm quite machete happy. So we're going to just trim up that, trim up the outside. You don't have to do it like this. You can just use something a little bit more subtle. I don't want any of that. That will rot down and go on the garden. So we're not actually wasting anything. Now, here, just bang the old soil off. Right, what we will do now is, as before, we'll clean this up. I'm gonna take it to the stream and you'll see what we can, uh, we can find. Realize, and it amazes me, is this is a hedgehog. Did you see what he's got in his mouth? He's obviously caught it alive because we don't have any dead mice around. But there he is. You can just about see the tail. Look at that. You can see the back leg coming out. People, I think they just think the hedgehogs. Yeah, he's off with it, mate. I let him shift. There. You are. He's got his mouse. Have you got your mouse? Yeah. That's a good boy. Oh, girl, I don't know what you are. You're a girl or a boy. There's his back leg, look. You disappear in there, old boy. Like Plantsman's Corner, this nursery benefits from a, a stream. It's quite interesting actually. Hundreds of years ago, this little stream, it was bottomed out in big stones. And right the way along, so, so it was running, there were these two um, big stone troughs that were sunk in. Here, you can, uh, you see that, this is quite a deep trough. I'll just get my arm in. I'm not going to split me bloody trousers. Yeah, right down there, see? And that's a really big stone trough. Very, very useful. And why it was, was the old cooks down at the hall in the posh houses for the knobs, they didn't like dirty vegetables. So what the gardeners used to do was drop all the vegetables into this trough in the stream, would wash them in about half hour, then they take them into the kitchen. That made the gardeners much more popular and the cooks liked them. Interesting though, isn't it? But these things, that's, that's what they're for. We still use it today. We stick vegetables in here. The only thing is you still got to wash them because this is a moorland stream and there's 2,000 sheep pissing in it further up. Right, there's your delphinium. So we're gonna just clean this off. And the reason we're going to do this is we want to expose those dormant buds. Now, as I explained to you, you cut them back and then you just leave them for a week and those buds start to swell. Now, look at that. Now, each of these is a potential delphinium. Now, this is a name variety. So, this is, uh, you know, this is quite a high earner. But that's 
you know, from one delphinium pot, we always save half a dozen pots. That's, well, if you're American, that's six. I don't know if you have dozens out there. If you're Australian, that's probably more than you can count. Right, but there you are. That's, um, that's what we do. Now we'll take this back to the potting shed, right? So now we've got our, um, our delphinium. We're going to just clear a bit. Of it. Now what I'm going to do is just cut that stub off there. I'm going to look for an area and I'm going to put the base of my secateurs in there. There's different ways to do this. I used to use a scalpel but to be honest I've found secateurs. So what I'm doing is putting the thick part of the secateurs under there and going down the middle of that stub. So rather than cutting right the way through I'm then going to open it up. Like that and that prizes them apart so let's take that stub back a little bit more is that my pink watch strap I'm very pleased with that I've got all pink of late I don't know why I've felt pink I'm going through a pink stage so there we are I've cut that bud off with a little bit of root I'm going to reduce these roots back And there's another one. Just reduce the roots back a little bit. And again, now if we look here, I'm going to be greedy and go right down. You could use them both. It depends how many you want. And we go down through there. If you look here, you can see there's a piece of stem, bud, a little bit of root. Now when you pop these up, you're using these buds, what they'll do is they'll root away and, and they'll develop one or two little dormant buds around there for next spring. So that instead of the traditional way is to do cuttings in spring, well cuttings I've always found quite hard. The reason they're hard is because delphiniums are hollow inside and if you don't get them at the right time they can rot up through that stem. And I've just found the losses so difficult. In this way, we get plants next year that have oh, three or four of those. I'll show you in a minute. This last year's plants they are less than a year old. Then we go down through this again. And look, I, this is probably getting boring for you now. There's another one. I'll probably get two out of that. There's another bud underneath. You actually don't need the root on it. And sometimes you have very inferior quality buds if, if the delphinium that you're using is old. You see, that's, okay. that's got no root on, but I'm quite happy with that. Where the hormone is at the base of this bud will produce roots. When I want to look really scientific, I get the scalpel out. It looks much more technical, but quite frankly, it makes bugger all difference. I'll tell you what does help though. Posh glasses. Varifocals. There's an interesting story about varifocals. My old partner here, before he retired, got himself some very focals. And he was going up the garden one day, and there was dozens of customers about. And he had his very focals on, and they were new. But they made him sick. And he just, we just about had time to get a bucket before he threw up in it. Unfortunately, when he threw up, his teeth came out into the bucket. We sat him down and he was more worried about his teeth so God help us he fished about in them in his bucket of sick and put them back in. It was horrible. But no I'm done. That's my experience of varifocals but these are alright. I went out to the optician, stuck them on. 
no problem at all. Right, waffle aside, here we are, here's all the buds. There we are, it's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, now, there, now look, there's little two, look at that one, look, they are they look a little lovely couple aren't they, look, look cuddling up, well we're going to just chop them in half, because I want two, to get the dozen, 12, so that one little pot has yielded 12 potential plants, I need some small pots, Right, I should have been more organised, but this is a bit of a last minute job. So we're just going to put some compost in there, get your pot, get your bud, and just put the bud slightly down below the surface. The old delphinium in there. Just make a little hole with your finger, stick it in. You can develop a, a quite a quick way of doing it. Of course, I'm very, very used to doing it, so I can tell by things, but you might want to take a bit longer over it. We reuse pots. People say to me, oh, well, you must wash them. Well, I've never washed a pot in my life. I probably should, but I always work on the theory that if my plants can't stand a bit of dirt and gunge, they're not as strong as they should be. I want my plants to go out of here resistant to everything that they, as much as we can make them resistant. Sometimes I think people are too clean as well. I've never been clean. I was a dirty little bastard as a kid. I think I'm clean now. Well, I wash every couple of weeks. So, there we go. We're nearly through. Yeah, let's do this big one a little bit slower. And just make a hole with your finger. If you've got roots, just put them down into the base. A bit of compost around them and just pinch them in. Pinch them in. There you are. There you can see that little thing sticking through there like that. And that's it. All you'll do with those is stick them in a seed tray. Label them. Preferably in writing that's understandable. It doesn't matter what variety you're using, just put the variety and the date. Now I, I can't overemphasize putting the date on things. We all think we remember, but we don't. It's very important. Stick the date on, what it is, give them a good water, where you go, Bob's your uncle, you've got 12 nice delphiniums, expect to get eight out of those and you won't be far wrong, lower your expectations a bit. Um, and that's it, that's how you do crown buds. That's how you grow delphiniums in a way that's, 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 that's really, really useful, if you're, particularly if you're selling them like we are commercially. If I was a gardener, I wouldn't have a garden without delphiniums in it. But what I would do is buy really good 
delphinium plants to start with before I do my own. Um, Blackmore and Langdon's were always the best delphinium growers and I think they're some of the best still. So start with really good name varieties. You'll pay about 10 or 12 pounds for maybe a small plant and then you can increase them as you wish. Okay, thank you. Now, these delphiniums here, these buds were taken, oh, about 10 days ago. I did 1,200 altogether. Obviously, I'm a nurseryman, so I want quite a lot. And I would expect now they would be starting to root through. Yeah, you can see that. And if you look on that side, you can see you're starting to get these little white adventitious shoots on the end of the roots there. That's what we want, those nice white ones. And they're starting to... And here's, here's one that was done over. Yeah, you can see they're just starting here. Now, because the buds on the roots, and you will find this if you do this yourself, some of the buds will be stronger. It's like shoots on a, on a, a tree that you cut back. If you cut a maiden tree back or you prune something back, the top bud is always it's the apically dominant bud. So what happens is that's usually stronger. It's the same with this. You'll get buds that are stronger than others. You can see there's a couple of fat ones there and there's a little pissy one there. Yeah, a couple of little pissy ones there. I'll show you about that in a bit. But There, now that's beautiful. That, that's really starting to root after 10 days. Another week on that, and that's going to be well away. Root like hell. And uh, you will find that you'll get some that will fail. I would expect about 30% to fail. That's why I do 1200, so I'm going to get about eight, 900 plants. Anything else is an extra bonus. I mean, that's beautiful. Look at that. You find that some varieties are stronger than others. Look at that. You know, that's that, these little white shoots I was talking about, adventitious uh, roots. Now, that, that's what you're really looking for. That means they're growing away and they're going to go like hell. Now I know it's time to go home, Pepper. But let's just, shall we show everybody, hey? Eh? Shall we show everybody a couple of really nice conifers? This is an AEB, it's called Early Start. And look at this. This is related to the traditional Christmas tree, although traditional Christmas tree is different in different countries. There is a scabby old yellow loosestrife, but very effective. You see, it's just a just an ordinary common plant. It gets no diseases or anything. Spreads like hell. We curtail it a bit now and again, but it's all right. Some self-sown campanulas at the back, lactiflora. Been sowing themselves around here for four centuries, I think. Anyway, the conifer that I really want to blow me end off about it is just round here there 
No, the one in the foreground, although that's nice, that's uh, Pinus parviflora, Glauca. Lovely Glaucus. Glaucus is just bluey grey or silvery blue. Twisted needles. Very nice. No, it's this one, Skylands. Picea abies, Skylands at the back there. He's almost tabulated. Layers of branches. And in the evening light, it's really semi shaded here. It's just uh, really nice. Some might say it's a bit minimalistic in its branches and its needles. They are almost bicoloured. I really like it. Um, well, obviously I like it because I wouldn't have planted the fucker if I didn't like it, would I? God, I do say some stupid things. This is a, a Picea, um, well, is it a Picea conico? Yeah, um, oh, I've forgotten what it's called now. Uh, anyway, it's a, you get them in, in green usually, but this is one called Sanders Blue. It's really nice. It forms a neat little pyramid. You don't have to excuse I'm getting a bit old these days, and I? I really forget the names of things I've known for years and years. But there you are, look at that. In the background there. Well, that one there is a, a roos, uh, just hanging over the stream there. Roos uh, Typhinia Dissector. That's nice, because It goes bright scarlet in the autumn, as does that little Berberus. Now, I'm not allowed to propagate that one, but it has a lovely colour to it. But it goes completely scarlet before it loses leaves in about two or three months' time. And that's Berberus admiration. You see all these little suckers from the roofs, all in the path here. Now. You see, I, I, I'll be digging them up potting them up and flogging them. Well, that's what we do. No, this is a, a cornice, a cornice cousera. One called wolf eyes. It's lovely, isn't it? Lovely variegated, clean light to it. Yeah, very old hoster flowers. Some people like them, you know, they like the flowers more than they like the leaves. Um, I don't go a bundle on them. There's yeah, a little dog there waiting to go home. You want to go home, Pep? You want to go home and get a chicken dinner? Because you're starving, aren't you? And Finn and Tucker aren't here, and you're all on your own, and you're pissed off. And people be patting your head all day, and now you've got an itchy arse. Oh dear. So there you are. That there, just before I go, because I only meant to show you one plant here, but we might as well trot along with this. Uh, make this the last one. This is an aster. Now, this is an aster. I don't know what it is. Uh, it was given to me by a plant hunter. And that one there is an aster. And we call it Black Betty. We don't know what it is. And it flowers October, November. And it has a lovely blue flower, a deep blue flower. Typical aster flower. It's not prone too much to mildew at all. But it has these black stems. And they're very, very nice. Really dark. But it gets seven or eight foot tall. You know. It'd be up there, oh, yeah, about eight foot, seven or eight foot. 
It's big. I haven't done one of these walkie talkies for many years. Mm. Look at them, those little lucanthemums. Right, that's all you're seeing of them. Uh, that's it. Because I want to go home for my dinner and Pepper's fed up. Helen, who works for us, does these displays and she replenishes it every week. It really is a credit to her, isn't it? I mean, look at that. That's beautiful. I want to play some music in this. You know, you feel like you, you, you want to sing along to English Country Garden or something. I might burst into a rendition of it. Yeah, now look. See that delphinium there? That's that's not a delphinium. That's a snotty sign. Um, that delphinium there is called butterball. Can you imagine a flower more buttery looking? Look at that. You think, think you're going out or getting out of that? Tell me. What they do is find a lump of fox shit and have you roll in it. They are not going in the house smelling of fox crap. I know they think it bloody keeps you camouflaged and the rabbits can't smell you. But it also stinks. But. Oh. And you needn't think you're getting away with it either. You are just as guilty. Look at it. Look, down there. Fox shit. You dirty, stinking bastard. I'm sorry. This is hurting me more than it's hurting you. I know you don't like cleanliness. I never did much, still don't, why? Come here. Yeah, little twat. Come on. That's a funny old life, isn't it?